Morning, good morning, good morning. So I've got one more PBQ for you guys. I thought this was a really important one. You will probably have to do something related to this. It's some of your questions, if not in the PBQ. And it's good real life practice too. Um, you're going to have to administer firewall rules and allow certain types of traffic and block other types of traffic. Okay, so let's look at the task here. Um, so allow the host on the LAN to remotely access the storage and database from outside the subnet. Okay, you can see there's different subnets here. We have one for server, host, and then uh, there's the internet, firewall, two switches here. Okay, allow the FTP server to be accessed from the WAN, which would be from the internet, and then deny all other traffic. Okay. So um, let's just do it one by one. So allow the hosts on the LAN to remotely access the storage. Okay, so let's look at the storage and database. Um, what protocol do we use for storage? Does anything jump out at you? Well, that would be server message block or port 445. Does it have port number on here? Yeah, I guess you'd put the port number here or protocol name, something like that. So I put both. Um, okay, so we want to, um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. I'm going to allow a rule here. Source IP. Oh, I do have a um, port here. Anyway, um, so it's going to be, what is it? Three, one, two, 100. Um, some of these firewalls might allow like um, a scope or an address pool, um, or they also call it a range. So you might have that option in your firewall. I'm going to do that just to make it more simplified. Okay, um, source port. So it's the source here going to, and then what's our SMB or our storage server? Where is that IP? It's up there. Okay. Um, our destination port. So if you want to work in a more high security environment, you can do port translation or maybe on the client side, change the port number, it just makes it more secure if anyone's snooping on the network and they'll be like, oh, that's port 1000. What is that? Maybe they won't be interested. But if they see 445, then they know, oh, that's some sort of file share, some storage. It just keeps honest people more honest, right? Anyway, I just like to think of it that way. Okay, so that allows traffic to flow from this subnet to this specific server with this specific port. Um, and we need to do the same thing for the database. Do you, you remember what port is SQL? There's um, different ones. We have MySQL, we have the Oracle Net, and we also have Microsoft SQL. Um, personally, because I know remote desktop is Windows or MS, uh, I, and it, that is 3389. I just, for some reason, remember 3308. Um, I believe that is the port number for SQL, MS SQL. Okay. Same thing here. Um, we're going to do that range. 200. Okay. And again, if it was more secure environment, um, we could play around with port translation or maybe change the ports on the native client and uh, just make it a little more secure. We're going to allow that. Okay. And then the WAN, right? But then what about these guys? Because they're not on the ISP or behind the firewall. So how do we allow both of these to access? Hmm. Well, 
um, FTP, but it's going to be port 20 or 21. 20 is the data, and 21 is the administration of it. So think real quick, what kind of answer could we put here? What IP would it be? Would it be 4.121? Would it be 3.1 to 100? Can we do a range? Um, are we going to have future subnets? Is everyone going to have access to this FTP server? Um, since, you know, it's, it's anyone's game, anyone can access the FTP server. It's open to the internet and it should be open to the host. So we don't really care what IP is accessing it. I'm just going to put any. Okay. 20 um, to 21. We'll do a range there. We didn't do a range on the other ones. But since FTP does have a range, um, I'll just put that. Okay. Destination IP. Um, where is it going? We'll put the IP for the FTP server. Okay, um, port 2021, I'm gonna say allow. Um, so the higher up a rule is, the more priority it takes. So if we put another rule on line four that's related to SMB or SQL or FTP, it'll observe the first rule and then go after that. So that's how it takes priority. Um, why did I put FT? It should be FTP. So, uh, oops, now it's going to look all messed up. Should I fix it? And let's fix it. See, it didn't take too long. Okay. Trying to be a little nicer. Um, all right. And then we also need to keep these servers secure. So if there's someone trying to access the other two servers from the internet, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. Um, so I'm going to just say any, any IP, and then there's going to be a deny rule there to not really allow anything else to happen on this network. So it just doesn't matter who you are or luckily we do have this address range. So if we need to put like another host in here, then we should use like 150 or in between there and we can grow and build that subnet and or that VLAN or whatever it is. And um, it allows some room for growth. Okay, we need to make sure the internet cannot really uh, access anything since they're not from these source IPs. Anything else will be blocked except for the FTP, which needs to have that allow rule for any as well. Okay, so that's the gist of it. That's what it should look like when you take it. Um, yeah, get some practice, maybe set up a real firewall, allow it from the WAN, see the traffic go back and forth, get some good practice. Um, hopefully this helps you on your exam. You're definitely going to have a rule about access control lists, setting up denies and allow rules. Okay, good luck on your exam. Thanks for watching.